When Venus Optics said they'd like us to test one of their lenses, we got very excited. Um, as Blackmagic Pocket users, we wondered, was it going to be their 7.5mm or the 9mm, preferably the Cine versions? And then they sent us this. This is Lauer's brand new 4mm fisheye lens. It's designed specifically for Micro Four Thirds, and it's a little bit different, shall we say. The first thing that strikes you about this lens is how small it is. Now, I've used some C-mount lenses on my Blackmagic Pocket, and they were small, but this is tiny. At the front of the lens, there is an iris ring that has stops from 2.8 all the way through to 16. At the back of the lens, close to the mount, there is a focusing dial. That has a very weird little nubbin, I don't know if you can quite see that there, which you can use your finger on to get the focus. The lens has a very large unprotected frontage, which is something you're going to want to be careful of. It does, however, have the frog eye coating, which is something that Lau has developed, which basically means that dust and moisture should roll off. The exit pupil on this lens is absolutely minute. In terms of build quality, the lens actually feels a lot heavier than you would think. I believe it's mainly metal with some plastic parts. When you attach it to the camera, it has a very satisfying click. It comes with two lens caps, a rear plastic lens cap, which is fairly standard, and this larger metal cap, which drops onto the front of the lens like that. There is a little bit of a cutout there because of the focus nub. Um, I'll be honest, when we were using this, I was terrified that this was gonna fall off. But I'd say in all the days of testing, it never came close to coming off. The field of view on this lens is quite insane. I believe it's 210 degrees, which basically means if you have this mounted and you're using the full sensor on either the GH5 or the Blackmagic Pocket, you are gonna get a circular projection onto the sensor. And when you crop it on the Blackmagic, obviously it then gives you full sensor coverage. In the uncropped mode, you're very likely to see your hands on the actual camera grip, and you have to be very careful because you could quite easily get people at the edge of frame without realizing it. In the HD crop mode, this still gives a very wide field of view, approximately the same as you would get with a fisheye 16 mm on full frame. This is a lens that we use all the time on the Blackmagic Pocket. This is our Zeiss 2.8 16 mm fisheye. This is a really great lens, and on full frame, this gives the same field of view as the Lauer 4 mm does in the HD crop on the Blackmagic Pocket. Now, even in the crop sensor mode, this lens is very much a fisheye, which means anything you place close to the edge of frame, be it people, buildings, lampposts, you will see very obvious curvature. However, if you can put the camera slightly further back, it's possible to get some quite interesting wide shots. Now, depending on what's in the frame, there still might be some distortion, but in some cases, that could actually add to the design of the shot. But one of the major limiting factors with this lens is the lack of an ND. So you're either gonna have to shoot a very high f-stops, alter the shutter speed, or shoot at very high frame rates. This lens is at its best at about 5.6. It's sharp and the contrast crunches. Stop down to f16, it's a little bit soft and it loses some resolution. I'm happy with a lot of the wide angle shots that we got. The ones that are soft, I would say, were probably ones that we've done at f16. If you could shoot the shots later in the day when the sun wasn't quite as bright, it would have probably helped. But still, we got some pretty cool shots, which we wouldn't have got any other way in the 120 frames a second. We were pleasantly surprised with a lot of these shots that we got, and many of them could be used quite easily in a drama, short film, music video, etc. However, I think that the curvature of this lens is probably going to be a little bit too obvious for most people, certainly if they're shooting drama, unless they're willing to embrace the curvature that the lens gives. Where this lens really excels is when you can place something close to the camera that accentuates the crazy perspective. They appear sharper with much better resolution. We were doing a documentary shoot, we were waiting outside the location. We'd done a few panning shots just to see how the architecture would react to this lens. There's some very obvious distortion in some cases. Some of the shots look better, you could easily use them without anybody thinking you'd use the fisheye lens. We had the camera on the tripod and I was standing about three feet away from it and I just said, I'm gonna try something. And we started doing some really weird, freaky stuff where I was peering into the camera or glancing around and the distortion of the face was quite horrendous. However, at the same time, it was really quite cool. And you suddenly saw the creative opportunities that this lens afforded you. You can place this lens literally a centimeter from the action. There were shots that we filmed where we put it close to a tap, and although they don't look it, it was literally that far away from the dripping water. There was another shot where we filmed water going down a plug hole. And again, the lens was literally centimeters from the action. 
One of the things Venus Optics is famous for is their 0D lenses, 7.5, the 9, the 12, and the 15 millimeter. All of these are rectilinear lenses, which means very little barrel distortion. The lower four millimeter literally goes in the opposite direction, embracing distortion. This is a lens which will insist upon the shots that you are doing, and it allows you to create some shots which are quite startling. I'm not saying I'd use it in every single film, but I can see myself once, twice, three times a month pulling out this lens and getting a shot that would be impossible any other way. I've used C-mount lenses on the Blackmagic Pocket, and to be fair, I got rid of them because they were a little bit fiddly to use. I prefer something, you know, larger, which is why we now use Cineglass. This is a very small lens, so if you have large hands, you may find it fiddly. The Iris has hard stops, which may or may not be an issue for you. The focus takes some getting used to. I would not say this is a lens that is designed for doing pull focuses, although we did manage a few. This lens does have very noticeable chromatic aberration. Again, that is not unusual for fisheye lenses, but it might be too much for some people. It's lightweight, it's small. You can literally put this into your pockets. The price is $199, that's not gonna break the bank. It is a very nice clean image. It will match in perfectly with the other lens in the Lara range. If you're looking for a Lara lens to use on a Micro Four Thirds camera, the nine millimeter or the 7.5 are far more obvious choices. You might not like the crazy distortion this lens gives, but there are some cases where I could see it being really useful you could use it in a serial killer movie or a horror movie. Maybe in a sports event where you need a really wide panoramic shot of the, the venue. You could use it in a club, you could use it in a music video. This is a lens that really does come to life when you embrace the craziness. You can have so much fun and get such wacky and insane shots. Like all the other lenses Venus Optics makes, this lens is a little bit crazy. But if you're willing to embrace that craziness, you can do some really cool stuff.